say welcome to Monrovia It's a nitty bitty city Place where them girl them so pretty Welcome to Monrovia Where the youth and they go astray I see them losing it every day I say welcome to Monrovia 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 Welcome to Monrovia 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 Hello, my name is Alvin Harris, founder of Alita's Legacy. Alita's Legacy was founded to give children in Africa and Liberia most especially the chance and a hope to a better education by providing them with the resources that they would need to get this education that they so deserve. And also provide the tools, the resources and the training for the teachers to give these kids the education that they so deserve. Monrovia. So here we are. We finally, we finally made it to, to, to Monrovia. And we're waiting for the um, train to come and pick us up now. To go to the hotel has been a long couple of days. Now we're tired. So yeah, we're here. This is how you know you're in Africa when you're driving at <laughs> night. The car has got absolutely no tail light at all. So I'm here with Miss Harris, who is the CEO, acting CEO, acting CEO yes. of the Monterado One. Okay. School One School System. School System. Okay. Yeah. Since you, since being the CEO, what is your what is your main role in this position? My main role is to super, ensure that the DOs are properly supervising the schools within their districts and following the Ministry of Education policies and mandates and ensuring that those mandates are carried out in the school. Okay. Yeah. So as a C acting CEO now what are some of the challenges that you are you are finding in this school system? The infrastructure is a huge challenge. This is an MCSS school so you don't see crowdedness in here. But most of the schools like the government schools that are not MCSS and even private schools, we have huge crowdedness in the schools. And then we don't have enough infrastructure to host the number of students that come to the school. Like sometimes the building is not big enough, we don't have enough chairs, and much. top of all of that is train teachers. Train how, teachers how, what, what are your suggestions or what do you think would be a good way to get some of these teachers trained. What do, you, what do you think? I think in service training is 
one of the best way out in service training. Like you bring the teachers to a training center every Saturday okay. when they are not in class for the, that day and then give them some incentive to come to that training and get themselves qualified to teach. That is one of the easiest way to get more trained teachers. So do, so do you think that there are equipped um, 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 individuals here within your system who are able to train these yes. teachers? Yes, yeah? there are equipped individuals on ground who can train the teachers. They only need the facility and the incentive and organization and some, I mean somebody to just put it together and give them incentive to train. Yeah. Not all of the teachers in the school had formal education training. So I think that we could partner with local teachers, take them over there and educate the educators so that they then in turn can educate the students in a proper manner. What's your name? My name is Leviticus. Leviticus Smith? Yes. Leviticus from the Bible? So I hear you the dudes in the school. So what's your favorite subject? It's English. English? So what do you want to be when you when you go grow up? Um, you want to be a pilot? Wow. You want to be a pilot. <laughs> so in this school, thank you. Student of this school, what do you think are some of the biggest problems you have here? What do you guys need to make this school better? We need, we need to build the school. You need to build the school. Yes. So how are you gonna build build the school in what way? Our ceiling is spoiled. The ceiling is spoiled, okay. The roof is spoiled. What else? And our bathroom. Your bathroom is, is okay. So you need privacy when you go in your bathroom, you need you need to be there where people don't see when you go into the bathroom. Yeah. Okay. One of the places um, we stayed at, uh, one of the hotels we stayed at in Monrovia was was close to the beach and one, one day we were walking and um, came across these kids who started to do acrobatics for us. And it was in the middle of the week. We asked them why they were not in school. And one of them said, well, my parents don't have money to send us to school. So we noticed that um, these kids would dance and do the acrobatics and take the money home to their parents. And that's how some of them got fed because that's how their parents got money to make lunch or dinner for the day. Um, another day we walked to the, through the, um, the cultural center um, where they just had an impromptu um, performance for, for, for us and um, welcoming us to the village and, and performing and it was, it was pretty great and touching.
We also visited um, the Glory of God school system in Painesville, Monrovia, where we, we met with the principal, um, Ms. Lishan Shannon, and spoke with a couple of students like um, the other schools that we had visited. Um, this also was in a very, very um, deplorable state. What 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 would make your school better? This school. What would make this school better for you? The school I want is to go all to to every okay good thing to have in the school. Like for the school to have clean missions. So you want to have a clinic here? Yeah. So when you guys are sick, you can just go straight to your clinic. What do you do for lunch? Do you have free food here during lunch period, or do you guys have to buy food? We have come for during lunch period. Our principal should provide. Your principal food. provides food. What grade are you in? Nine. You're in the ninth grade. And how old are you? I'm 15 years. You're 15 years old. So what do you want to do when you when you grow up? Oh. If I come out, if I feel well, as well in New York, I'll do to political science. You want to do political science? Yeah. So you want to be a politician? Yes. Yeah. Why do you want to be a politician? Because I, I love my country and everything I do, I want to be my country. So you, whatever you do, you want to you want to do it here in your country. Yeah. So you want to see your country being better. That's why you want to you want to change things. That's why you want to be a politician. Um, Lishan, how many students do you have here in this school? Presently, we have two hundred and sixty-five students. Two hundred and sixty-five students. Yeah. And the class the class um, mm -hmm. are from what Run grade? From nursery eight to ninth grade. And approximately, so how many students are, you, are in each classroom? For some class, we have 22 students, some we have 25, some we have 20. And the largest class, we have 26 students, which is the third grade class. Okay. Yeah. So what kind of homes do these kids come from, um, generally? Some come from homes that at least they can afford for most of the, they are all around here and we see that they are from whom that they are really struggling. They are really struggling. Most time they come to school hungry and we try to feed them three times a week on our own expense. They just give a little of $20. Sometimes they can't even afford it to give that 20 librarian dollars. 20 librarian dollars? 20 librarian dollars to a meal, a plate of meal. Some hmm come to school really hungry. So 20 Liberian dollars is, hold on, I'm trying to make, I'm trying to do this calculation here. 20 Liberian dollars. Yes. No. 20 Liberian dollars is like 10 cents, yeah. 10 US cents. So that what was, we, we told them oh my God. at least. So 10 cents to help feed a kid for three days here is 10 cents, 10, 10 US cents, and some family still cannot afford that. Oh my God. I definitely think that after seeing some of them very lethargic, I think there's an opportunity to give them a meal every day by providing a cafeteria setting that we can get some energy into these children and increase their capacity to learn. All of this, of course, is going to take the generous support of people in our area that are willing to provide the funds for this, but we can get a new building, a cafeteria, new bathrooms, just improve conditions all around the area. So for 20 years now, we managed to resuscitate, to bring the country back to pre-war level, but the country is finding it difficult to rise up. And this is where these children are coming. So, just want to come here to say a few words to you. To say that um, I hope some of you will visit Liberia. 
to see what we are talking about. We are still rebuilding. The country is still very fragile. Most of the symptoms that led to the war are still there. But I think the people are now resolved that enough is enough and we will try to get on with our lives. And with support from friends like you and others, the international community, I think that we will get there. So what what what's what's the, the, the learning standard like here in the school? Yes, we have most of our teachers are from the teacher college. Okay. Yeah, La Poses, where I graduated from. We got some teachers here in university for that university degree or what they will be earning is not equal to the teacher college degree. So we encourage them to go to teacher college. So the teacher's college basically gave them formal teacher training. Yes, yes. Okay. What, what are some of your challenges? What do you think will help make this school um, a better place for, for learning for, for your students? One of my greatest challenge is now what they're paying school fees. <laughs> to get school fees now from parents is very difficult. Even the ones that on scholarship that just supposed to register up to now, since September then now, some of them can't even meet up with the registration, which is 6,450 Liberian dollars. Some of them just can't meet up with it. So we're looking at about $33 for registration. Yes. And they can't even. And they just can't meet up with it. So are you getting any sort of assistance I know this is not a government school, um, but are you getting any any sort of assistance from no, the government or anything? No. Any stuff? No, for nowhere. Only the fees that the students pay, we manage in it. Are you done? She's already done with her exams. Oh wow. Are you sure you, you're done? So what grade are you in? I'm in the seventh grade. So how many minutes did you did you take to to take that test? You took five minutes to, to finish your test. You must have really studied for that test. And what subject was that? Geography. Geography. Wow. You finished your test too. So you must have started for your test, huh? You are ready for it? So you think you'll make a hundred? Yeah. And you think you'll make a hundred too? Yes. All right. Okay, well, congrats. Um, people have also asked, why are we coming all the way to Africa to, to help these kids um, with the schooling or to help with this project. Um, the thing is, these kids do not have the opportunities that others um, have in the United States. Um, even the government here is struggling to give these people the necessary uh, resource that, you know, they would need to get, you know, these kids educated. We've arrived at the Abedibansi Elementary School. This is a school that was named after um, well, my family. So that's my mom's um, last name, Abedibansi. And we're here to see, to tour this other one and see the, um, meet the, um, the principal and others who are in charge here. Hello. How are you doing? Okay. Esther 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 and 
because the school has my family name on it, we want to see how we can help to make this place better for the kids to learn and um, make it more conducive and, and give them at least the, the basic necessities that a school would need to, to run and be successful. Your name's Andrew K. E. Abedi Bessie. Yeah, that. It's very mean. It's from the school. Wow. Okay. But he started the school and he. Wow, that's so cute. Wow. <laughs> so, uh, I'm so surprised. So, what are some of the needs in this school? There are a lot of things. The first thing, the building is not conducive. Okay? But it's raining, the whole building is leaking. The roof is I can say it's out of date. The, the sink, everything. You have been here when it is it's raining, you feel bad. But the water is all over. You just try to patch it so that when the school will be, the drink can have somewhere yeah? safe to be. Mm -hmm. oh. Now at least government is not ready to give subsidy to schools. So we manage in our little no means. Just to be, funds and TA funds to be able to do these things. But even at that, it's not even enough. We have to go extra mile to around people to ask for help so that we can be able to put things together to make the place conducive for our children to learn and help. So the PTA funds, so how much does a parent will a parent pay for a student? The PTA fund? Yeah. Pay 200. 200. Um, US dollars? Yeah. No, because it's <laughs> so 275 Liberian dollars. Yeah. That's a PTA um, requirement or yeah. payment. Yeah. And how much is that in US? A dollar and twenty five cents. So and how many students are in this school? Well now we have one hundred and sixty six students. So that's two hundred let's say three hundred dollars you is your operating fund for this school. Per year. Per year. Yeah. That is horrible. Um, geez. So, and your grades are from? First grade to sixth grade. First to sixth grade. Yeah, but we are anticipating adding maybe uh, K1, K2. Kino We are anticipating doing that because we have more students in the area that are not in school. But because the, the school doesn't have or space. any child or space, so we are not running any child. We are only doing from first grade to sixth grade. The space is very small. So the space is limited, and you have a bad roof. So you want to give us a tour so we can see how the school looks like? With pleasure. So we want to take a little tour of the school right now. So this is a second grade class. Okay, and this is a small classroom. How many kids will fit in this place? So this is a teacher's desk. This is a second grade class classroom. And you have four students to, to, a, desk. to a desk. Hi, sir. How are you doing? Good. So you're the teacher of this class. So what are some of the the, the, um, the, the, the challenges that you face that you're facing here as a teacher? at the window. So when it's raining, yeah. the sun rays, the rain, everything's gonna come in here and disrupt the class because there are no no windows, no glass or uh, little louvers for, for the, um, the windows. So your roofing problem is your major, major issue here. All this, this the ground has to be has to be <laughs> plastered. Um, wow, the chairs. Chairs are really bad. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look at the floors. They're basically sitting in sand. Um, I mean, it's all sand, dirt that they're sitting in. 
just to, to, to sit in class, sand. What good things you really see happening in your school? So you want your chair? So you want a chair to be replaced? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The chair, the building, the roof. Yeah. Because when it when 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 it's raining, it rain on you guys. Okay. So is this faculty bathroom or students and all? Faculty bathroom. Okay. Students bathroom is outside. Outside. So the yeah. students bathroom is outside. This is a faculty bathroom. Yeah, that's a registrar's office. And also, no window for for the um, to shut the windows in case it rains. And this is your cabinet. That's all you have here. Oh boy. Hi. This is our library. So this is how you're doing. This is the library here. That's what they have for library. And this is. That's all the books they have in the library. Yeah. Wow. So what do you think uh, are some of the major issues here in Liberia when it comes to, to, to education and and, uh, and what do you suggest to, to help change some of these, these things, some of the issues that you have here? Well, that would be my view, but not the view of others. One of the things I would say, not qualified teachers in some of the federal schools. Some of the teachers are not qualified. Secondly, the surrounding the buildings is not well equipped and not furnished. And for that reason, it just have to step down on the status of improving the education standard in the country. So how do you think some of these some of these problems, you know, how can they be solved? Well, again, I would say to have someone solve first thing, may have a qualified area, a decent building, not leaky, furnished with sitting, then come in with a library and qualified teachers. So these kids are coming to school to learn, but at the same time, they're getting sick while they're coming to school to learn. And these are not conditions any child should be should find find themselves. Some of the kids that we met along the way, um, when we asked them why they were not in school, they told us their parents didn't have money to, to send them to school. And when we asked how much it was, we're looking at a kid going to school for 20 to $50 for the whole year. And the parents do not even have that, 50, 20 to 50 US dollars. Um, and the parents do not even have that to, to, to register them or to buy uniforms or buy clothes or books or anything. So the end result, just stay home. Former president of this country said, I will build thee a great nation. And another time, the same president said, ignorance, poverty, and disease is our problem. Ignorance. If we cannot educate the kids in this country, we are, we are planning to fail. So our final um, stop of the four places that we visited was the Children's Future Program and Orphanage Center run by uh, Miss Christina Blamo. This lady was doing a great job with these kids. Um, the kids all had flip-flops and clean clothes on. And the thing is, they didn't even know we were coming. We went, we visited the dormitories and it was all, the beds were all made up. The place was clean. 
um, like other places that we had visited, you know, they're having problems with the roof also with the rain coming in when because of bad roof, um, bad roofing um, and lack of food and stuff for these children. Um, she's getting little or no help from the government and only a few donations here and there from stores and shops in, in, in the area that um, where, where they live. So um, after the tour of touring of this place, um, we, I think we really felt the need to also give them some sort of assistance and um, put them on the list of one of the places that we will eventually help. The boys Charlie is clean. It is clean. It is really clean. This is cleaner than the other um, orphanage that we, that we visited. So they are doing something good here. I can even smell Dettol or some antiseptic in here. So she's cooking on, she's cooking with wood on three big, big, big stones. And this is your kitchen right here? Okay. So there's no dining hall. So you cook over there where the wood is and then you, you divide the food here. And they take the food inside. Where's your bathroom? Where's your bathroom? Is it in the car, right? So it's a pit latrine like system that they use here, and this is their bathroom. This is their bathroom of the shower. Well, a shower with no shower, but they take bath in here. for coming, you're welcome. Thanks. Well, we have so many needs, especially for the school. The two building is leaking seriously. During the rainy season, we face problems. When it rains, sometimes the students come out and we have to patch the area with zinc and things. So the building is seriously leaking and we don't have certain capacity for the students. And I think you saw the auditorium. For this year, we were blessed to have more students. So the building is very small for program and things. Sometimes we need to have other activities, but the auditorium is very, very small. The heat, they can accompany the children. It's the food we need, additional food, because the Christian aid that is helping us is only giving food for the children that the list of children that is on their program. So other children that are coming in, sometimes by the police or other people, I have to try on my own to get food for them. And also clothing, feed well, school materials. So when you when you talk about school material, what 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 are you exactly talking about? Like like we need a library where we can have books and keep the books, where the children will go and do research. But we don't have anything like that here. Sometimes they require textbooks that they need, except we we'll go out to buy them. We don't have anything like that here. Uh, so it's really giving me difficulties to. So have the children. Okay. And another thing, we need a decent bathroom and toilet for the students. And it's not even enough because the boys have to, the girls too. Bathroom is one one. So in the morning, we have to constrain to wake them up at 5 30 so they will take bath in the darkness quick, quick before they can break. So you have 20, like approximately 25 kids to a bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> wow.
Thank you very much. The first thing right now is to control the leakage, to change this roof, and a decent bathroom and toilet that we really talk about. We are aware right now that uh, the age limit, the age range of 50 to 40, constitutes 60% of this country's population. So with that said, unless we give attention to the young generation, you know, we are planning to fill our country. And some of us do not want to be a part of that history. We want to be a part of the history that will, that will encourage and improve our country. These children are the future leaders. We're not giving them handouts, and we're not giving them charity. What we're doing is giving them hope and a chance to a better education so that they can have a brighter future and they can ultimately be somebody tomorrow. So please join with us and help us make this possible because these children do need this education so that they can be somebody tomorrow.